Hello, and welcome to London Pinball. Today I'd like to talk to you about this 1972 MCI U-Boat. MCI is a company that you may never have heard of before. Uh, it is. It stands for Milwaukee Coin Industries, I believe. Uh, and uh, they did not make a whole lot of machines. Uh, this machine is, I would imagine, uh, was very expensive back in the day because it has an immense number of motors in it. Uh, it has no fewer than six motors in it. Um, it's a complicated machine to, uh, to, to repair. Uh, and I'm going to go over some of the uh, details of how this machine works. Uh, as this video goes on. So what I'm going to do is uh, play the game and then I'll go through the machine and show you how it works uh, and all of its ridiculous intricacies. Here's the instructions on the front of the game, and uh, so you look in here. Oops! You look in here, and I'll start the game. You can see what that looks like. So there's your ships going by. Here's the buttons here, red and black. One is for torpedoes and sub up and sub down. Here in the back of the machine, you'll find various things, including the uh, transformer. Worth noting is uh, there is at least two different types of transformers used in this machine in this um, uh, in this game uh, across you know the number of games they made. Uh, one of which is listed on the schematic. The other is completely different. Um, so this transformer here, uh, the one on the schematic has six lugs listed. Uh, this one has, I think, twelve lugs. Um, some of which aren't used, some of which are, are connected to each other. Um, I'm going to show that closely, uh, but it's worth noting because um, if you are looking to do any kind of uh, work on the game, uh, you'll notice that the schematic does not match the transformer in every machine. You can see uh, back here on the transformer there's a number of places with uh, crimp-on terminals uh, that look like they were added after the fact. Uh, these are 
100% from the factory. So this machine has, like I said, it has six motors in it. Um, there are three under here. One, two, three. The one on the far left is your main timer motor. The one in the middle is the uh, rotating disc with the, um, uh, the, the ships on it. And the one on the right is the motor that, that allows the disc to move between surface scene and underwater scene. Uh, also under here, and I, it's hard to see, uh, but it's right uh, in the middle, right here, is a photo resistor board. Um, and the reason I mentioned the photo resistor board is because when I got this game, the photo resistor board was not working. Um, and so I got it to work by flashing a light in it uh, over and over and over and over again, and eventually it came back to life. I do not know why. Um, that photo resistor board uh, connects to here, and um, it can be removed from the game for repair. Our, up here are uh, four connectors right here. Uh, these connectors need to be removed. Actually, there's five if you include this one. Uh, these connectors need to be removed um, in order to remove the whole relay panel from the machine. And you'll see also there's this connector here, right back here, um, right there, which connects to the various sound boards. And you'll see there's uh, six different sounds that the game makes, each of which has its own sound board. Uh, this game was released in 1972 um, and uh, has solid state sound, which is uh, fairly revolutionary for, for the time. Um, up here, you'll find there's three motors. One, two, three. Is there three or two? Two motors, pardon me. Two motors here, uh, and there's one on the other side as well. See if I can get that in the picture here. So there's so there's two motors there, uh, and then there's one on this side. And these motors control the um, torpedo uh, functionality and the depth charge functionality. And this one here on the left is the uh, the motor that allows the submarine when you're in the underwater scene to go up and down. Up from there, you've got all the scoring lighting for the player and the scoring lighting for the, uh, for the enemy. Um, and there's a relay here and the same on the other side. This relay right here and the same thing on the other side uh, is what engages to um, uh, step up the score relay, the scoring. Uh, it's basically a small stepper. Um, and you'll see here, we can Step it up. Uh, actually, pardon me, that's the reset. Let's step it up here, like this. And then this is the reset here. When I got this machine, I had to um, clean up this spring right here to allow the reset um, to, uh, to occur the way it's supposed to. I had to do the same thing on both sides. This motor here uh, is the uh, torpedo motor, and uh, the third switch, the switch closest to the motor itself, right here, uh, this is the switch that uh, uh, opens, or pardon me, closes uh, momentarily uh, during the torpedo uh, sequence um, to allow for a hit. So you'll see here, down here is the disc, all of the ships and whatnot are printed on the disc, although you can't see them. Um, and you'll see that there's a, uh, a light right here that shines um, through the holes in the disc uh, onto that photo resistor on the board down below. Uh, and if the light is shining onto the photo resistor through one of the holes in the disc, while um, that switch up here on the motor is closed, uh, then that'll award a hit. So basically when you're moving the periscope, you're moving this disc back and forth like this, um, and doing so keeps that light uh, engaged through that hole, which then engages the photoresistor, and then 
allows the machine to know when a, when a hit is registered. I'm going to mention free play. The game does not have a free play setting, however I've managed to defeat the, um, uh, or I've managed to trick the game into believing that there's a credit on it all the time. There's a, a jumper wire on this relay back here. This is the, this is the credit relay. And if you jump the white violet wire to the uh, yellow wire, or pardon me, the blue wire, I believe, uh, on this far left relay, then the game will believe that there is a uh, there, that there is a credit, even when there isn't a credit. And I've labeled that wire free play. It's worth noting that there's uh, no power switch on this machine. Um, one would have to either add one or unplug it and plug it back in every time they wanted to turn it on and off. The flashing yellow light is an attract light, I guess. Um, it only flashes when the game is not being played. Um, the red bulb here is uh, the light that flashes when the player uh, is awarded a hit. The blue light here is what flashes when the enemy is awarded a hit. There are a number of potentiometers on the machine. You'll see one here uh, and another one up here. This one uh, allows you to increase or decrease the, the number of seconds um, that, the, that the scene is off. The lamp is like the, the projection lamp is off um, when you get a hit. So when you get a hit, You'll notice uh, in the gameplay video that I put that, that was shot earlier, um, the lamp goes off, and the idea is that the uh, the scene is moving along, and so you're left in the dark for uh, several seconds. Uh, by default, this was set to about five seconds. I've I've set it down a little bit so it's it's only about two or three seconds. There's another pot up here on another assembly and that is uh, the number, the amount of bonus time. The, the way the game works is if you get seven hits you're awarded bonus time um, and so the timer motor will actually stop for a number of seconds. I have it set to about 45 seconds of bonus time. Uh, you can increase or decrease that however you like. Also, um, and I, I didn't want to I forgot to mention this, um, but there are the there are uh, pots that control the speed of the timer motor and the speed of the uh, spinning disc. Uh, they are mounted underneath this uh, relay panel, and I believe I, I will talk about that now. So this is the backside of the projection unit and the motors that are on the underside of the panel. Getting this unit out is a bit of a pain, and I will show you how to do it. Um, but I thought I would get a decent shot of what it looks like currently. Before, um, it had two of the crappiest potentiometers in the world mounted right here. Right there. Uh, I have replaced them with two new 100 ohm 2 watt pots that I acquired from Mauser for 14 bucks a piece or something like that. Um, this was the cause of my uh, woes with most of the game. Um, one of, both of these pots weren't making uh, reliable contact and as a result uh, the target motor which is the middle motor here, right here, and the timer motor, which is the top motor right here, neither of those motors were working reliably as a result of the crappy pots. So I've replaced those and I'm going to put the unit back into the machine now, but before I do so I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, so you'll see down here, this is the projector, um, there's the bulb there, and then two large lenses, and then that projects up through the through the target um, disc. And then there's a, a five-way or a four-way switch here, and this allows you to set the timer, uh, or pardon me, the time for the game. So 
you can choose 60, 90, or 120 seconds. And I'll show you the top of that here in a second. Two seconds later. And here's the top side of the, of the projection unit with all the sealed relays and the transformer. Um, and what I've done with the pots um, that were giving me so much grief, I've drilled them through the top side of the, of the wood uh, and inserted them through because the way it was set up before, you couldn't actually access those pots from the game without removing the entire panel from the game. You couldn't get your hand in. It was completely impossible to access these pots um, without removing the whole panel from the game. And so what I've done is I removed the label from the underside of the panel uh, and, and stapled it to the top to show what those pots do and uh, drilled those pots through the wood and mounted them like so. Um, I'm guessing that they were that they were mounted in such a way so that people couldn't actually access them because the the manual says that you know the everything is set from the factory and um, shouldn't need adjustment and I understand that but when the pots go to hell you have to replace them and I figured since they're no longer adjusted properly anyway I may as well mount them on the front or pardon me on the top so that at least I can access them if I need to. This is the back panel uh, from the game and it shows uh, various parts of the uh, of the assemblies and how they go together. Um, some of them are some of the uh, notations are scratched out. You can see that uh, uh, you know they it's like they were kind of making it up as they went along uh, and making changes and whatnot and rather than printing off new diagrams they just scratched out the ones the wire colors and whatnot that they didn't like and wrote in their own notations and here is the schematic again the transformer on this schematic is completely different from the transformer in the game um, I have spoken to an individual who has one of these and he has um, the schematic that's listed on the, or pardon me, the transformer that's listed on this schematic. Uh, and I know of at least one other U-boat that has the same transformer as uh, what is in this machine here. Okay, I'm going to play the game and you can see what it's like back here during gameplay. So on the inside of the front here, this door comes off like so. You'll find uh, uh, standard stuff, coin counter here. This is the shaft of the of the periscope that goes back and forth. Um, coin door is here. There's a separate set of keys for the coin door here. You'll see here is the counter. I don't know if you can see that. Interestingly, it's it's uh, at 69 plays, which is kind of funny because um, I'm a child. And then back here, you'll see right there is the switch for changing the the timing for the game. And there's also a switch here that changes the machine from 25 cents for one play to 25 cents for two play, or pardon me, two plays for 25 cents. There's the warning label, uh, which um, basically says don't leave the lamp off for more than 30 seconds or you'll melt the disc. 
the disc of course is right here right here uh, and it spins when the game is is on these are the two pots that I had so much trouble with uh, and I ordered new ones and I installed them in a way that allows you access to them because the way that they were uh, mounted from the factory um, you literally had to remove the entire relay panel to gain access to those uh, those pots uh, and I uh, mounted the um, the little label that goes beside them uh, on the top side of the relay board so you can actually see it um, because like I say it was uh, impossible to see and impossible to access uh, otherwise. Also worth noting is the, the threaded rod here that uh, runs through this shaft uh, is what can that's what controls the 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 disc rotation uh, or or at least where your um, where your submarine is or pardon me where your periscope is is looking. Um, the threaded rod on this machine when I received it was was terribly bent um, and so that that rod is supposed to be straight. So I had to uh, straighten that rod to make the machine uh, play properly. So uh, what is my opinion of U-Boat? Uh, this game is really interesting in terms of the technology that's, that's employed to make it work. Um, it's a bit of a novelty. Uh, there's, you know, once you get the hang of it, there's, there's not a whole lot of replay value there. Um, it's cool, uh, but it's, you know, I, in, a, in a large collection it would it would be an interesting piece. Probably not something you'd want if it was your only machine. Um, it's it's there's no it's no wonder that MCI uh, is not a company that many people have heard of. Uh, this game would have cost a fortune to build, uh, and uh, you know I'm not sure uh, that the replay value would be there long term. So. While it looks cool and uh, and it's an interesting item from a technological point of view, uh, it's uh, probably not the greatest game in the world. Anyway, that's all I really have to say about uh, U-Boat. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, talk to you later.